in addition to being always a calm and reassuring voice, and as the lead for the Economic Council here, and the leading person really in the United States on economic issues, Larry is well known to all. But one thing I don't think is very well known, and I sincerely appreciate Larry coming forward today to be part of this, but Larry just celebrated his 25th year in recovery. And so Larry, congratulations. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> appreciate it very much. Um, many thanks to the First Lady. Uh, I am Larry Kudlow. I just had a 25th uh, sober anniversary on uh, July 1. And I, I don't want to say too much. <clears throat> My story has been out there for, for many years. Um, I would just say that when the President and the First Lady um, offered me this position, which is the greatest honor of my professional life. And I've stayed a lot longer than probably a lot of people thought I would. Uh, it would not have been possible. It would not have been remotely possible. It would have been unthinkable that I could occupy such a job um, 25 years ago. Unthinkable. Um, I was a hopeless abuser of alcohol and drugs. I had tried several times unsuccessfully to get sober. Like a lot of my peers and friends, I went through bloody hell and suffered significant consequences. I'm not alone. Most of us had the same troubles. And um, I was unemployable. But by the grace of God, I, I did stay married. My wife is a saint, Judy. I've said that before, I'll repeat it. We've been married 34 years, it's a miracle. But it was difficult. The whole story was difficult. Having said that, I will offer this. It is because of my stubbornness and willfulness and the difficulties and consequences and the fact that I had to learn how to change my behavior and follow a few simple steps or guidelines. Um, I believe sincerely today that it probably was the best thing that ever happened to me because it forced me to change and seek a new path and return to faith. I might not have said it at the time, but more and more I've come to realize it down through the years. And so it's an honor for me to be with fellow suffering alcoholics and employers. And I will just say to you, you know, you will, you can get sober. You can. For those who are still sick and suffering, you can. It's not easy, but you can get sober and you can stay sober and you can lead a productive life. And most importantly, hopefully like myself, we can learn to help other people get sober and stay sober so they can be productive and contribute to society and to life. I think it's a phenomenal thing that the First Lady has engaged herself in this battle. Phenomenal. But you're pretty phenomenal. And you know I've said that and actually written that in columns down through the years. So it is my pleasure and honor to be here with you today. The President has been remarkable. I've known him many years. He brought me into this position. I didn't ask for it. I've served him to the best of my ability. He has been remarkable to me, accessible. We have great discussions, sometimes even debates. He's a remarkable man. And um, if I get time off for good behavior and, and write another book, I'm going to write about that because I sincerely believe it. But I'll also say this. Drawing from what the First Lady said, 
about loneliness and sadness. There's nothing as bad as that. You're trying to do good, but you can't. And for me, and I will kind of borrow paraphrase from the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, uh, it became clear and clear in my life that I was hopeless alcoholic. And it also became clear in my life that no human power could restore me to sanity. But I learned, finally, that God could and would if he were sought. And I sought him. Whether it's a higher power, or some religious power, the fact is I had to acknowledge my problems, my frailties, my powerlessness over drugs and alcohol, and just start over with the help of others. And to this day, and I mean this truly, to this day, in my personal life, I don't make a single significant decision alone because I have a track record of making bad ones. Instead, I go to my friends, my sober friends, and my wife to get advice and suggestions, and then I follow them. And that's worked for me. It may or may not work for you. I just put it out there. But it's worked for me. Left to my own devices, it was ugly. But leaning and following the advice of others and their sober wisdom has worked for me. And I'm here helping out with our team. And you two can do exactly the same thing. I don't care what you do for a living. It doesn't matter. This is a disease that uh, uh, has remarkable equality. No matter who you are, you can get it. And I got it. Um, there isn't a day that goes by that I don't think about my alcoholism. There isn't a day that goes by that I don't read my daily meditation and prayer in the morning. There isn't a day that goes by that I don't call or text one of my AA buddies. And there isn't a day that goes by that I don't say the serenity prayer. Not a day, for 25 years. Why? Because I have to. That's all, I need to be reminded of the main issue, which is my sobriety. I may have good forecasts or bad forecasts. I may give the president good advice or less good advice, but the one thing I do, without exception, is go through my meditations and the serenity prayer. And oftentimes, if things get a little intense around here, just occasionally, I will say the serenity prayer again. It works. It works if you work it. I hope you know that familiar phrase. God bless all of you. Um, I'm blessed. I'm lucky, but I'm blessed that I discovered God, that I discovered a higher power, that I discovered 12-step programs. And then I'm able to help out my fellow alcoholics, my fellow countrymen, to give service. It really is the pinnacle of my life. I'm an old guy that came late, but it's been great. Honestly, it's been great. My worst day, <laughs> my worst day, the president can be yelling at me or something goes wrong, I, it doesn't matter, whatever. My worst day now is better than any day I had before I got sober. And I mean that sincerely. So you can do it. And to the employers who are here and others, um, give us a chance, please. Give us a chance. That's all we ask. And we will try to own up to our responsibilities and stay the road, stay the path, stay on the right road, and help you. I think recovering alcoholics make great employees, myself. <laughs> 
and that's what makes it such a great thing that the First Lady uh, and my pal Jim and Jerome have come to help in whatever capacity we're here, official, personal, whatever. It's very rare for people to do this, what you're doing, ma'am. So we love you for it. We really appreciate it. And uh, if you'll permit me, I'll just end with this thought. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. The wisdom to know the difference. God bless all of you. And um, let's all stay on the happy road of destiny as sober men and women. Thank you, ma'am. You can see where we all love Larry and love having him here. We're also blessed to have someone in the administration, and I'm so blessed to have him as a friend. We have the nation's doctor who is firmly committed to safeguarding the lives of all Americans. Dr. Jerome Adams also, like all of us at this table, and I think like so many of all Americans, understand what addiction can do to families. The pain that it has caused, sometimes at a funeral, sometimes at a hospital or a treatment center, or sometimes at a jail cell. And so we're blessed not only to have his expertise, his phenomenal medical training, but someone who understands the issue and someone that I can call, as I frequently do on his cell phone, um, to say, Jerome, what should we do? And he's always answered that call. And before I let you speak, one of the first things that you did was recognize the importance of naloxone. And I see you have it sitting in front of you. And for the first time in 13 years, he issued an advisory to talk about this issue. So I now would like to introduce my friend and a friend to all Americans our Surgeon General, Dr. Jerome Adams.